Let's go to the main menu and click Guides. Then at the bottom right, locate the button labeled New and click it. Choose from the menu, Make a New Workflow, the last item in the menu, and click it. Let's go ahead and expand this window to the right. Just like creating a custom guide, we have to choose the kind of workflow we're going to do. Notice the options. Bible reference, word, can be English or lemma, meaning Hebrew or Greek. Biblical event, biblical person, biblical place, preaching theme, theological topic, and topic. Let's go ahead and choose Bible reference. Now, creating a workflow is a lot of work. It's tedious and time-consuming, but it's not difficult as far as what you need to know. So first thing we want to do is give the workflow a name. So click on the title and let's call this my first custom workflow. Now you might be asking, why would you create your own custom workflow? Maybe you have a Bible study process or you have a particular way of doing things. It's a complex set of steps and you can't always remember them. A workflow allows you to capture all that as well as share that with others. And that's probably one of the real benefits of creating a workflow. You can create a process by which you can disciple others in that process. All right, so we have the author typed in there. You need to give it a description. So go ahead and type a few sentences. I'm gonna leave my blank. Now here's how this works. The first thing you need to do is create all the major steps. So right now it's an untitled major step. Let's say we're gonna title this prayer. All right, so pray is gonna be my first step. All right, so we type in pray, press enter. Now, the next thing you need to do is locate this add button and click it. Now, the way this menu is broken down is you can search for something in the menu. And as you become more familiar, that's probably gonna be the easiest way to do it because all the sections that you normally see in a custom guide, you have access now here in this menu for the custom workflow. And that can take a little time to find those through scrolling up and down. So if we type in Atlas, we can have it show up right away and we're good to go. After the find part of the menu, you then have the major step and minor step. If your workflow is going to be very complex, then I think you should build it major in all the minors. The reason you're gonna see is moving things around is very cumbersome in the workflow. So you really wanna create everything in the sequence that you want. So let's choose minor step. Okay, so now we have a major step and a minor step. And this is how I would create things right away. Get the main structure done. Then once the major structure is done, then come back and add the individual elements. So now we have two steps, a major and a minor step. Let's go back to the major step, click add. And now we can add the next section, which is the type of item we wanna include. It can be a document, expandable text, a question and answer, share media, share text and text. Let's add each one so you can see what they look like. So here's document. Notice I can choose document. This is what you would find in your document menu. If I click bibliography, I now can see all the various documents. Very powerful. Let's click add again, and this time expandable text. Expandable text is extra information that will be expanded should you click it. So in other words, let's say you have a lot of information that you want someone to read if they want the details. That's when you use expandable text. Let's click add again. We have a Q&A and this is pretty helpful. So here's our question. Uh, what is your favorite color? We'll just type in the question. Logos will add the answer box. You don't have to come up with the answer. Let's click add again. Share media allows you to share media from Logos. Now notice there's nothing here we won't see this till we actually run the custom guide and we will in a few moments. Let's click add and do share text. Again, there's nothing here. We just select the option. We'll see it working once we run the workflow. And then let's click the last item, text. Now here is an overview of step intent and action. So let's just call these uh, additional instructions. Okay, so that's the major step. Notice that we're giving instructions. We're selecting documents. There's a lot of options here. Now let's click add and we can choose from the list below a variety of tools from Logos. Now to keep this simple, I'm just gonna choose Atlas. Now for the minor step, let's click add. We have all the same options. So there's no need to repeat this, but again, now you see how the structure works. Now there's a couple other things you need to be aware of. Over at the right, you'll see the three vertical dots, the stoplight menu. If you click it, we can promote this to a major step. So that's how you convert a minor step into a major step. Let's click that. 
you can see that Logos has changed it from 1.1 to 2. Let's click the three dots and demote it to a minor step. There you go. Now, if you click the three dots, we can move it up. And if we do so, now the minor step has been automatically converted to a major step. Very important to notice that. That can really throw you off. Now, let's say move down and notice it's still a major step. So it's a little bit of a conversion that Logos does to this item. So let's click the three dots and demote to minor step. Now, let's click the three dots again. We can collapse, we can expand all, and we can collapse all. This allows you to basically edit the whole document or a portion of it. Now, you can say show this step always or only for these passages. So if you have some kind of contingency, for example, only do this step if you're in a certain passage reign, the Gospels or something along those lines, then this would be appropriate. So use this judiciously because it's a very powerful step. And then last, you can delete this step. Let's go ahead and click off this menu. Now, unfortunately, you can't drag and drop, which is right now a limitation of the tool at the time of making this video. Now, I'm going to click in this text box here. Notice that I now have access to all the tools to format the text to my personal preference. All right, we're done. So let's go ahead and click done and see what our custom workflow looks like. Now, notice right away it's blank because we have not put a Bible passage in. So let's put in Genesis 1, colon 1 and then select Genesis 1 from the menu and click it. All right, this is pretty cool. We can see at the left our menu. If you don't see that, then click on the open or close the sidebar option, and that will allow you to see it. Notice there's a triangle to expand the menu, which gives us access to the minor step. The orange dot tells us where we're at. Now we can see at the right the contents of our workflow. Here we have that bibliography document that we chose. Then here's our question, what's the favorite color? And then we can click in there and put in our information. Here's the open media tool link. And if we click it, the media tool opens. Very cool. And I'm just going to select the first item. There it is. It's now selected. Let's click the X and close. Notice that all it does is open the tool. It doesn't actually bring the item into the workflow. And then here's our message that we can type. The information we type in this box will then be utilized with the Faith Life Facebook, Twitter, or email. So if we click on, let's say, the Faith Life, the Faith Life webpage will open up and the text we typed in will be there, in this case, with our verse reference. So be aware that what you type in normally will transfer over to the social media options. I'm going to click on the X to close the tab and leave this page. We now can see our Atlas section. We can click this item here to open this content and new panel to get more focus, or we can click these individual maps. Now, at the end of the step, we have to choose to skip the step or continue. Let's click continue. And now we're in our minor step. We had nothing there, so there's nothing to do. Let's click continue. Notice now that we've continued both steps. Logos has changed the icon from an orange circle to two completed circles with a check mark. Once you're done with this, click X to close it. To reopen a workflow, you must go to guides. Let's type in the word my to find this. And there is my completed workflow my first custom workflow, Genesis 1.1. We can click and open that and revisit it. Creating your own custom workflow is a great ability that Logos gives you. However, as I said at the outset, you only want to use this if you have a complex set of steps that you want to consistently use, like a Bible study process, or you're training someone to learn how to study the Bible and you've got a custom workflow to share. Okay, to share this custom workflow, we need to go back to guides. And then let's type in my space first to find our workflow. There it is. Let's click it. Then we need to go to the stoplight menu and click edit this workflow. And there's our share button. Let's click on share. And then you can share with public or a specific group. Once you've chosen that option, choose make document public. And now it says yes. Once you've done that, you click done. I don't want to share this, so I'm going to toggle back to no and click done. Let's click the X to close this window. So as you can see, this is a powerful feature, time consuming, but once you've completed your workflow, you can reuse it as often as you want with as many Bible passages as you want.